bastards, and welcome back once again to Usheng Fagush, Monster Killer. Now, last episode, we managed to carve away a tiny little beginner fortress down here on the first cavern level, and it's really been kind of dangerous, honestly. Oh, yeah, look at here now. It looks like one of our human monster killers has been found dead, starved to death. Remember, we had a bunch of these monster hunters get stuck out in the caves when we were first carving out the fortress, and unfortunately, they're all still stuck out there. Well, I suppose our first order of business is going to be to try to get these guys back into the fortress. Now, let's see, what's going to be the best way to go about this? I'm thinking we can make a little path out this side of the fortress, put some nice doors up real quick. I don't really see anything too threatening out in the caverns at the moment. We have a giant cave toad, and you know, what the heck? Before we go any farther, let's take a look at this slimy bastard. A giant cave toad is a giant amphibian predator found underground. Th that's literally the only description we're given. You know, again, if we wanted to have some artistic liberty with this, we could really take that and run. This particular one is average in size, his skin is taupe gray, and his eyes are black. Okay. And also we have to remember that this thing is a little bit bigger than a llama, but smaller than a horse. So yeah, a fairly sizable creature anyways. I'm sure it would make quick work of an unwary civilian. Keep on your toes, dwarves. Well, anyways, where were we? Ah oh, yes, we're gonna head out into the caverns. Hmm. Just right here, we'll knock out this wall, and hopefully that'll be enough. Just gotta keep our eyes open for any beasts that wanna try to make a run for the fortress here. We'll carve out a small tunnel so my dwarf's gonna access the eastern portion of tunnels here. And uh, maybe we'll carve it out a little bit over there too, because it is kind of honeycombed. Let's open it up a little bit. We are supposed to be brave hunter dwarves. I am a bit nervous about this, but eh, it should be fine, right? Probably. Okay, there we are. We have a nice tunnel set up here. And the monster hunters are making their way back into the fortress, which is great. But like, this poor guy over here is very injured. He can't even walk back to the fortress. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to set up a temporary hospital here in the dormitory. There we are, just like that. So now somebody should be going to fetch that hunter and bring him to our new hospital area. I would imagine. Or maybe not. Oh, hey now. It looks like to the north of the fortress we have a cave toad who just killed a human crossbowman. That big bastard. Looks like the human put up a decent fight before it went down, but then the cave toad bit their head and shook them around quite a bit actually, and the poor human didn't stand a chance after that. Hmm, <laughs> well, that's no good. But again, just a human. That's the price you pay for living the dangerous life of a monster hunter, I suppose. Well, it looks like we're gonna have to go take that big bastard out. Now we're just gonna make another tunnel out the northern side of the fortress right here. Just like that. It should be carved out momentarily. This poor goblin is stuck over here in the caverns. Be careful, goblin. The toad's coming. And? Oh, what happened? What's what's going on? It looks like the goblin just ran back to the safety of the fortress. All right, before it gets away, I'm gonna send out the sand blades. Now let's take a look here. Obak the Bat Killer is the current leader of the sand blades. And the queen is in there as well, but I'm gonna take her out for now. She strikes me as kind of a, well, a giant weasel, I suppose. And I figured she'd try to worm her way out of it. And we do actually have a bunch of other dwarves we can put in that spot. There we go. All right, sand blades, I'm going to send you here to our little stockpile room, which currently is not stocked with a blessed thing. There we are. And the toad looks to be making its way for the fortress. Oh, the sand blades have moved out. Overzealous. Well, it looks like one dwarf is taking on the giant cave toad at the moment. Two of them. Somewhat. I'm just letting them fight by themselves. They seem to have it under control. Still fighting, still fighting. A human has joined the fray and passed by the fray. Yeah, this dwarf's really going to town. They seem to be overexerted. Yeah, I'm sending in the other sand blades. Let's go, guys. They are moving in and the toad is dead. Good. Hey, and it looks like Obak the Bat Killer is the one who killed the giant cave toad. That is something. And she looks to have done it with an iron morning star. That's pretty cool. That's a human weapon. Must have been from that mace man who died out in the caves. Very interesting. Those humans do have some interesting weapons. I'll have to keep my eyes out for their merchants. We'll try to get our hands on some. And we'll have to keep a close eye on the Bat Killer. Either she's very skilled or just very lucky. In any case, she's quickly becoming one of my favorites. Anyways, now we have two ways into our fortress from the caverns here. Pretty dangerous. But that's what we like here danger, so I guess we'll just try to get used to it. And I suppose we'll start cleaning up these caverns out here as well. Open it up a bit, you know? That'd be nice. And we should really start trying to make some cage traps. I really want to start training some of these cavern beasts. That's going to be one of my top goals in this fortress. All right, there we go. A nice entryway into the fortress. A little more secure. And as for this eastern cavern area, we're going to get this cleaned up quite a bit. We have to be able to hunt out here, you know? We have to see our quarry. And this should do the trick, I'd imagine. I don't think it'll take too long. 
Now, just in case you're wondering, my food stores are looking a little bit better. We do have drinks, we have some food, so no worries on that at the moment. And in the meantime, I suppose I should start looking into those cage traps. It takes a while to train creatures properly, and it'd be best if we got started ASAP. Oh, and you know what? Something else I want to do before we kill too many more monsters. I'm going to make a small room right here. Nothing big, nothing too fancy yet. And that's how we'll do it right there. And this is where we'll display the bodies of creatures that we've killed out in the caverns. The more dangerous or interesting ones anyways. Now this here is just of course a small beginner trophy room. In the future we'll have a gigantic one. Gold plated. Columns. It'll be amazing. But you know, priorities and all. Don't want to be too foolish. Oh hey now, uh, okay I just paused the game because there has been a turn in the fortress. Yeah, remember that animal trainer that died last episode? Well, he turned into a ghost because I did not memorialize him. Well, that ghost battered Irvad named letter. Our queen. So yeah, um, it's actually kind of ugly. Oh man. Her lower body is cut open, dripping blood, and her guts are spilled. So I mean, really this ghost just kind of floated up, yanked her guts out while she was at work. I mean, that's gonna ruin your day right there. Wow, that really stinks. Oy, okay, um, I'm not sure if that's a survivable thing, honestly. But this is a total emergency right now because she is the queen of our entire civilization currently. A civilization that might consist of only this fortress here, but still, we have to protect her. Alright, now I'm following the queen. Let's see what happens. Alright, she is <laughs> currently trying to go make some more slate blocks. Your majesty, please. Oh my god, she just died. Oh my god, okay, um... Alright, well, uh, you know, not off to a fantastic start here in the fortress, I suppose. Oh man, okay, so that was a very short reign for Her Majesty. And I think we learned a valuable lesson. Take care of your ghosts. And what we have here is a stark reminder of the world that Dwarf Fortress is. Nobody's out there writing the story of this fortress. Anything can happen at any point, which really makes it a lot more like real life. Nobody's safe at any point. Keep that in mind as you watch these episodes. Anything can happen. Hell, I mean, this fortress could be over by the end of this episode. I'm not done recording yet. Yikes, huh? Well, let's hope for the best. Oh, but hey now, look at this. Obak the Bat Killer has claimed the position of Queen of the Grand Lancers. Huh, that is very interesting. She certainly wasted no time. Very interesting. Well, maybe this is a good thing. We'll certainly have to hope so anyways. Well, anyways, back to work, guys. Uh, it looks like Moma's Wield Tempted has assumed the position of Expedition Leader of the Killer of Monsters. Not too sure who this dwarf is. Oh, alright. Looks like Moma's is one of the starting seven dwarves. One of our two professional smiths. And she's the one who had her upper spine broken by that animal trainer before he died. But she seems to be doing well otherwise. She currently doesn't feel anything after seeing Irvad named letters die. The Queen. And she doesn't feel anything to have no shirt. So she's shirtless as well. Okay. Well, let's take a look at her new second in command. Her hair is wavy. Her very long hair is tied in a ponytail. She has a very narrow chin. Her tall head is extremely narrow. Her eyebrows are quite sparse. Her ears are slightly flattened. Her jade eyes are slightly protruding. Her hair is russet. Her skin is peach. And she also has quite a few scars on her. She has a massive jagged scar on her upper body. Scars on both of her hands. Yikes. You know, she seems like quite a character. Cover with scars, doesn't care about being naked, a broken spine doesn't get her down. You know what, Momas? I like ya. And if we have a look here, she's had one kill in the fortress so far. The giant rat. Tell you what, I'm gonna give her a nickname. And it's not gonna be a flattering one. Momas, your new nickname will be... Rat Bite. Just because she's an exceedingly tough dwarf, and she killed the rat. Done and done. You know, I really feel like I'm getting closer to the dwarves than I usually do in this fortress. Which is great. Getting to know the dwarves who they are, what their desires are, really what this game's about. All right, things seem to be going well in the Eastern Cavern here. Hopefully it doesn't take too much longer. We still have to carve out our trophy room over here, and I'd really like to start carving out a place for the merchant wagons to get down into our fortress. I do have a path planned, but I have a feeling it's gonna take a bit for those guys to get over here and start working on it, but no worries. Well, 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 looky what we have here. An elven caravan from Ilialetha has arrived. That is fascinating. I have not had a long-term fortress on YouTube so far, where I've had to have regular dealings with elves, so this should be pretty interesting, I'm thinking. But really, I guess I don't know what to trade with them. Um, well, how about some armor and clothing? We did get off the bodies of those dead monster hunters out in the caverns, but it's still pretty good. I mean, it's nice clothing. All right, that should do it. Just some worn-out clothing and armor. We'll make sure to buff it up real nice first. Get those bloodstains out. And it looks like we have some more petitions here. Two humans and a goblin. I'm just gonna approve them all again. It couldn't hurt, really. 
Hopefully. All right, I think all the goods are at the trade depot now. But before we do any real trading, we're gonna need a broker. And it looks like at tier, the glassmaker would be a perfect candidate. How's that sound, buddy? Okay, now let's do some trading. What do you fools have for me? Nothing too fascinating. Yeah, it looks like we got some barrels here, some clothing, a couple of fruits, which we will take. And this is interesting here. It looks like they have a few items down here at the bottom of the list that are each worth 9,000 value. And they appear to be instrument pieces. Uh, strings of an instrument that are made out of a flashing sparks cloth. Whatever the hell that is. That's very interesting. Hmm. But nothing we want to buy, certainly not at that price. But we will take some of your barrels, some cages, sure, why not? And we'll take some of your clothing, too. What the hell? Might as well, if we do enough trading with them, they'll bring more interesting things next time. And hopefully we have enough to trade. Eh, just barely. Ah, but they accepted it. Fantastic. And I must say, it was a pleasure doing business with you, you bunch of milk-drinking Dell Dancers. We should do this again next year. Oh, hey now. Up at the northern side of the fortress, looks like a giant ulm just killed a goblin crossbowman. One of the monster hunters. Well, it looks like we gotta send out the Sandblades. Oh, it looks like our queen can no longer lead the Sandblades. That's a shame. Well, let's appoint our new expedition leader, Ratbite, to the position. Sounds good to me. And we'll all assemble in the storage area here. And uh, it looks like the Ulm has died. Okay, well, never mind. I guess it just bled to death. Our easiest battle yet. Oh, okay, we have a giant cave spider down in the southern cavern now. Just killed a human axe man. That is horrible. Like, truly terrible. All right, well, okay, a giant cave spider. About the same size as a giant cave toad or a giant ulm, but with one terrible, notable exception. These creatures spray webs, and webs are extremely dangerous. Anybody who's webbed cannot do a single thing. They just have to sit there. So I could send the sand blades out. They could all become webbed immediately. And then the spider could just go and kill every single one of them. I don't know if I should risk that. Now let's take a look here. All right, unfortunately, it looks like the spider is actually fairly close to the fortress. I don't know if it's gonna head over here, but if it chooses to, it can be over here in like two seconds, which is horrible news. All right, tell you what, I'm not gonna do anything too drastic at the moment. I think instead I'm just gonna keep an eye on the creature. And we're unpausing the game. All right, it seems to be making a beeline straight for the fortress. Okay, the spider is currently at the eastern entrance to the fortress, perhaps attracted here by the stench of our rotting queen. It could be. Well, there is a human spearman right by the thing. Hopefully he takes the initiative. Let's see what happens. And the spider is running around the eastern cavern here. Doesn't seem to want any trouble. That's fine, I suppose, but still a little nerve wracking. Maybe you can go away now, what do you think? Jeez, yeah, I don't like this at all. Oh, 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 okay, he looks to be coming down into the fortress now, I just paused the game. But there is a human swordsman here. <laughs> the spider is running back out into the caves, I don't like this at all. Go away, you bastard. Alright, it almost looks like the spider is attempting to try to get into the fortress. I'm locking these doors, you're not coming in. In fact, you know... This is an interesting thing. I'll tell you what, I'm actually gonna lock up both sets of these doors here. All right, just like that. And the spider is sitting in there. I don't know if it could destroy doors. I don't think it can. I really kind of want to trap that thing. It might be neat to have some tamed giant spiders around the place. All right, I built this small hallway here so the spider gets funneled through it. And that's where I'm gonna put the traps, which we are currently working on. Oh, neato, another round of migrants. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Nineteen dwarves. Wow, that's quite a few dwarves. Yeah, a whole bunch of dwarves. That's probably not fantastic. Oh well, I'll get you all sorted out eventually. No worries. Well, anyways, I just ordered those cage traps to be built along this narrow hall, and those are being worked on, seemingly. And those cages will be in place momentarily, and we're all set. Okay, so I suppose I can now unlock this door and let the spider come charging into the fortress, and hopefully it gets stuck in one of these cages. Well, let's give it a try, huh? The door is unlocked, and there we go. The spider is caught in a cage trap. Fantastic. Now I suppose we can get rid of this hallway here. We're not going to need it anymore. And what to do about this spider? Our only decent animal trainer uh, died and then ripped our queen's guts out. You may remember. Oh, note that the miners have finished clearing out this eastern cavern area here. You probably have noticed already. And they've even cleared out our trophy room. It's all smooth already. And if we look down to the south, our wagon tunnel is done as well. And it goes up, 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 quite a ways to the surface, where I've already built a tiny little place here for the wagons to enter. Nothing special, really. There's not even a roof on it yet. 
but it's something. Our first above ground structure. All right, now let's see, back down in the fortress here. We desperately need a place to store bodies. We don't want any ghosts floating around destroying more important dwarves. That really should have been done by now. God, I'm stupid. All right, how about up here in the trophy room? I'll make a down staircase. And right here, we'll make a small mausoleum for our dwarves. Nothing too thrilling yet. This is just the starter fortress, remember? And there we are. It'll do the trick. Just getting it smooth now. Oh, and hey now, would you take a look here? At tier with call, the broker is taken by a fey mood. The first strange mood of Usheng Bagush. Oh, but you know what? I just had a thought. I'm pretty sure this dwarf is a glass maker, and I don't think we have any glass anywhere in the fortress. Well, let's see. Yeah, now they're just sitting in the meeting hall. Well, let's see if we can get this taken care of. Shouldn't be a big deal, I don't think. All right, there we are. At tier with call has claimed a glass furnace. So it looks like we are gonna need some glass. Yeah, it looks like at tier is demanding raw green glass and yarn cloth. Ugh, oh, you know what? We're not gonna be able to satisfy this dwarf's needs. We have no access to any sort of yarn cloth. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, it looks like there's not much we could do at this point. Oh well, back to work. All right, our mausoleum down here is finished and is actually half filled already. We'll have to expand it in the future, but this is gonna do for now. You can see over on the side here, I put a couple of fortifications looking out into this watery cavern area. I really like that idea. And I think I'm going to keep doing that while we're down here. You can see I've got a little space in the dormitory where I've already done that as well. Yeah, I like it. The dwarves can look out. I'm sure they can't see too much. It's probably kind of foolish because certain creatures can spray webs through those fortifications. Webs or fire, I suppose. But, eh, whatever. I'm careless. Ah, okay, perfect. Looks like that strange moon dwarf went berserk. Oi, I'll tell ya. Well, unfortunately, we don't have much of an option other than to send out the sand blades. Well, let's do this. Unpausing. And they're- okay, well that was extremely quick combat right there. Yeah, and it looks like the insane dwarf wasn't able to do a single thing to any of my dwarves. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Well, back to work. And some more migrants. Okay, let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine more dwarves. Currently up to 58 dwarves in the fortress. Wow, things are progressing quickly around here. A little frightening. Oh boy, looks like we have another giant spider on the map. It just got through killing one of my monster hunters. Man, those guys fall left and right. Bunch of idiots, really. Well, I'm gonna try to keep an eye on this thing. Hopefully we can trap this one as well. And while we're on the subject of giant cave spiders, we have kind of an interesting situation over here. We have no animal trainers in the fortress currently. Our last decent one went insane after spending months in the sun. But, interestingly enough, Dusum Tegusdegel, the milker, this is the one that's being controlled by my brother Joey, remember. Dusum is a novice animal trainer, and he's actually one of the most skilled animal trainers in the fortress. Now, I had let Joey know that Dusum was the most skilled animal trainer in the fortress currently, and he agreed that Dusum should step up and be the fortress's main animal trainer. But with one stipulation, we have to purchase every single cow that comes in with merchants, from here on out. I imagine our Queen Obak would be pretty okay with that, and so it's been agreed. Now, I don't think training a giant spider is particularly dangerous, but I guess I'm not 100% on all the ups and downs of animal training. I did read on the wiki that giant cave spiders cannot be tamed 100%, so it's kind of a shaky proposition at best. Oh, oh geez. Down in the caves here, it looks like that other wild giant spider is currently attacking a, a mother and her child, a young baby who was just born in the fortress. Oh man, that's ugly. The giant cave spider has bitten this baby multiple times, every time injecting venom into the dwarven baby's blood. Wow, that's horrible. I guess I'm not sure how this giant spider is managing to bite the baby so much while the mother's carrying it. This poor baby's not gonna survive. Alright, everyone get to the fortress, please. And hopefully this mother's able to get back to the fortress, at least. Alright, following the baby. Oh my god, oh god, oh, it's horrible. Did the mother really just ditch the baby back here? The mother really just dropped the baby on the floor and continued on to the fortress. That is horrible. The poor baby's just throwing up in the caves here. Alright, that is not cool. Alright, how you doing, baby? Get, get, keep on going. Get back to the fortress. There you go. Oh, oh no, here comes the spider. Oh, it just seemed to pass by the child. Keep going, little babe. Alright, this baby is hanging in there. I don't know where the hell your damn mother went. That, that was really her. She was waiting in the doorway for the baby to come back. What a miserable mother. Yeah, boy, I don't know if that baby's gonna survive. I really hope it does, though. And I certainly hope that goes without saying. All right, now down in the southeastern corner of this main courtyard area here, I'm getting rid of this wall that we had first built to block out the caverns, just because up above I've covered up the space with stone blocks, so we don't have to worry about things coming in that way anymore. And now down here we can get this place cleaned up a bit, and I'm thinking over this way we can start making a workshop pavilion, so that the courtyard isn't so cluttered anymore. Really getting a bit messy out there, you know? We could put some workshops over here, some storage perhaps. Yeah, I'm thinking that'd be a pretty decent idea. 
It looks like the merchants have arrived once more. Although it says their wagons have bypassed my inaccessible site. I don't know why that is. I figured they'd be able to get down here. Yeah, it looks like it should be good. Hmm, not too sure. Oh well. Oh hey, that's a problem. It looks like this giant cave crocodile sauntered into our stockpile and is now trying to break down this door. A couple of dwarves are wounded, it seems. Nothing terrible, though. That's good. Oh, oh, it looks like they're rushing out the door and attacking the monster now. Eh, alright, well, I guess we're in it already. Go ahead, Sandblades. We will follow the crocodile. And it has died. Good. Man, oh man, these caves are seriously dangerous, huh? Oh, hey, now we have a little bit of turmoil out in the caves here. Oh, a giant bat. Man, this place is so dangerous. Oh, and some more migrants. I think I'm getting in over my head. Oh, I've lost count. Yeah, whatever, come on in. Up to 64 individuals now. And we have yet another stray cow calf, which I will toggle for pet availability. For Doosome, our animal trainer. You know, I'm sick of all these monsters coming in and destroying our fortress. I'm gonna start putting some cage traps out in the tunnels, and hopefully we can start at least catching them and maybe butchering them. That'd be pretty cool. And maybe if we're lucky, we can get another useful one. As if this spider's being of any use so far. Right, I guess I'm putting it off. We really have to try to get this thing trained. I'm curious to see what we can do with it. Alright, we do now have some cage traps over in the eastern caverns here. I tried to put them in the narrow choke points leading into this cavern. I don't have all the entrances covered yet, but we have enough up where we're gonna catch something eventually. Better than nothing. And we'll do some trading real quick. Well, they have glass, so we'll take that in case we have any more strange moods. Uh, they've brought leather. We'll take that. And some cloth. Couldn't hurt. A bunch of different types of meat here. We'll snag some of that. And there we go. Very good. Well, it looks like Doosum has already taken that second cow calf as a pet. He named this one Cybrek. Very cool. All right, Doosum. You have your two cows. Now it's time to start training some animals. Gotta earn your keep, buddy. And so we have our giant cave spider named Koshalippi. We are gonna try to train her and we will assign Doosum. And for now anyways, I'm gonna make sure that Doosum doesn't have any other labors enabled. We're really gonna want him to focus on training this giant spider. It's kind of a dicey thing, you know? I want him to focus. All right, let's follow Doosum and see what happens. Following him and he's heading over to the giant cave spider and it looks like he has some cave lobster which he fed to the spider. Ah, and it looks like Koshalippi is now semi-wild. So really a very poor training job. But, you know, better than nothing. You gotta start somewhere. Well, I'm not gonna let it out of its cage quite yet. We'll just keep it in there and Doosum will keep training it for now. Just till he gets a little bit better at it, you know? Oh, looks like we have another strange mood here. Tossid Dodaknagreth, the metal crafter, is taken by a fey mood. Tossid is a metal crafter, and I know for a fact we currently don't have any metal. But that shouldn't be a huge issue. Tossid Dodaknagreth has claimed a metalsmith's forge. And it looks like they have nothing they need. Fantastic. Although it looks like the only thing they require for this artifact is metal bars. That's gonna be super easy. No problem. We'll just smelt up some Galena. We have that stuff all over the place. A nice silver artifact. Nothing wrong with that. Ha! Easy enough. Tasa Dodaknagreth has begun a mysterious construction. Really hoping it's a good one. It would be really cool to have a memorable first artifact. Ah, and here we are. Tasa Dodaknagreth, the metal crafter, has created... Tasa Dodaknagreth. A silver chain. It appears she named it after herself, and she claims it as a family heirloom. Fantastic. Let's have a look. This is a silver chain. All Kraftorf ship is of the highest quality. This object is adorned with hanging rings of silver. Huh, well, that's strange. It's a silver chain, so I assume it's made out of silver rings, and yet it's adorned with the hanging rings of silver. So basically, this is a silver chain with redundant chains coming off in different directions. Kinda strange. I imagine it would tangle fairly easy. But hey, whatever. I'll tell you what, I like it. And you know, I was saying that we should keep the spider caged up for now, but with an artifact chain like this, I mean, it'd certainly be a shame not to chain that creature up somewhere. I mean, it's not like the chain's gonna break. Look at that thing. Yeah, I'm thinking we should definitely chain that spider up somewhere. But where? We're gonna have to be smart about this. How about I make a little nook over on the side here? We can give it its own little training room. There we are. Nothing too fancy. And we'll throw a door up there as well. And even a cage trap, just in case that thing gets out somehow, it won't go running off into the fortress. And a restraint, of course. The artifact chain. We'll put that right in the middle. Oh my, looks like the giant cave spider has already reverted to a wild state. Hmm. You know, I kind of thought Doosum might be on top of that. Oh, here he is, on his way back. And it looks like he tamed her again. And this time she's actually trained. Well, that's pretty cool. Although I'm still going to chain her up in that tiny room by herself. Now she's assigned to that restraint. And there we are. She's chained up in this tiny room. Neato. Oh, hey now, here's something. Sina Napelaroth, the Lady Consort, is visiting. Hmm, yeah, here she is. Not too sure what business she has here at Usheng Vagush, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. 
Looks like she's just heading down towards our meeting hall. Yeah, that appears to be about it. Just hanging out, apparently. It says she's a warrior, and she has come to slay beasts. She heard that this was a good place to search for monsters. Well, darn tootin' it is. That is pretty cool. Let's take a look at this lady, huh? Ms. Sina Nepelaroth. She is equipped with a silver battle axe, a bronze shield, some bronze and copper armor, and interestingly enough, a human bone crown. Hmm. Her hair is extremely long. She has a broad body with almost no fat on it. Her splayed out ears are fused lobed. Her periwinkle eyes are deeply sunken. Her nose bridge is incredibly concave. Her eyebrows are low. Her head is somewhat short. Her hair is dark taupe with a touch of gray. And her skin is dark peach. Very cool. A warrior lady. I am really hoping she doesn't meet her end in our fortress. That would definitely sour our relationship with the humans. Ugh. Maybe we can kind of just uh, keep her in the fortress here. Well, I guess we'll see. Well, speaking of interesting individuals, something I wanted to do for a while now is, um... Ah, yes, right here. Stinthad Arbanmel Bill, the dwarven baby. This little pro here. This here is the baby that got absolutely perforated by that giant cave spider, and he is still going. That is impressive, I have to say. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me either. I mean, he must have got bit a dozen times each time getting injected with giant cave spider venom. And I know in his combat log, it said he fought off paralysis at least once. I thought for sure he was a goner. And I mean, I guess he's still not totally in the clear, but I think the little guy deserves a nickname, don't you? So, Stinthad, today you have earned the nickname Venom Blood. Because I have to imagine most of your blood is currently Venom. There you go, buddy. I right, keep on trucking, bro. Oh, and you know, something else I've been meaning to do for quite some time now is uh, our little trophy room here. We really have to get some display pedestals up in there, as well as put something in there that's worth looking at. Let's see here. First, we will put some pedestals along these walls here. There we are. That'll get us started. And now I've got to put some thought into what we could put on those pedestals. Well, it looks like we have a whole bunch of things we could put up on those pedestals. There are quite a few named monsters from out in the caverns, ones that have killed monster hunters in the past. Maybe we'll throw some of those up there. Here we have a Joridopod, the mangled skeleton of a giant bat. Sure. And here we have Zulshagopi, the partial skeleton of a giant ohm killed out in the caverns. We'll put that on the second pedestal. Ooh, and here we have the mangled partial skeleton of Kikutikism, a giant toad. We'll put that on the third pedestal. And yeah, you know, I think that's going to do for now. The corpses of three dead, dangerous beasts, proudly displayed in our trophy hall. I'll have to keep my eyes open for any other neato corpses. It's pretty exciting. Oh, I also have to make this area into a museum, just like so. Welcome, dwarves, to our new trophy hall. Hopefully, it will serve to inspire Usheng Bagush's future monster hunters. Well, I'm going to tell you what, fellas. Before this episode drags on too long, I think we're going to call it a day. What a busy episode, I'll tell you. We did all sorts of things here in Usheng Vagush. We have our busy new craft dwarf pavilion over on the side here, next to our now partially trained spider. Very cool. We have lightly defended passages out into the caverns, wide open caverns with high visibility. Always important. We have a bunch of cage traps set up in the eastern caverns. It's only a matter of time before we start catching some really interesting creatures, I'm sure. The fortress is looking fairly decent. We have our new trophy hall, of course. And our mausoleum, now expanded. We're just trying to get some more burial receptacles in there. And guys, we have to remember that this is only our starting fortress. A tiny place. We have to keep digging down. But I think we're still going to hold off a little bit before we go down any farther. We still don't have a proper military yet. And we really should start training up some of these dogs here into war dogs. Then we can assign them to our soldiers. That'd be cool. And you know, one last thing I'd really like to do before we head out here. I think our new Queen Obak should make a statue for the fortress. Oh my lord. Okay. Or, well, you know, I suppose we could also have a Forgotten Beast show up. The Forgotten Beast, Kona Raphathia Sithi, has come. A towering blob composed of flame. It has three short tails and it undulates rhythmically. Oh my. That is an ugly one, too. Certainly changes my plans. I don't even know what we could do about this. Well, I suppose we'll have to wait till next time to see. Anyways, fellas, I truly hope you enjoyed watching this episode. And I certainly hope you'll join me next time, here in Usheng Vagush, Monster Killer. And until next time, you bearded bastards.